What's up, NASCAR Authentics fans? David Land here, and you're looking at Wave 4 of 2015 for the Spin Master NASCAR Authentics. Uh, these started hitting stores around late November 2015. I had a hard time tracking these down. In fact, my good friend Race Day 2011, aka Robbie Noonan, was able to find these for me and got these for me. So, uh, big shout out to Race Day 2011. If you don't know about Race Day 2011, you need to check him out. The card in the corner right there will take you right to his channel. Uh, be sure to subscribe to him because he does just as much, if not more, NASCAR stuff than I do. In fact, he does more NASCAR stuff than I do. Uh, but this is the first video in what I'm calling the Spin Master send-off. And as you guys are well aware, Spin Master is out of the game for NASCAR Diecast for 2016 and in is coming Lionel. However, there are still NASCAR Authentics products that I have not reviewed yet and the last three videos of that, this little NASCAR Authentics series uh, will be sending off Spin Master in style starting with Wave 4 and then moving on to some other things that you guys might uh, know about that I haven't reviewed yet. And it will finish with the Lost Wave Part 2, aka Wave 5. If you guys haven't seen the photo that's floating around, or a few of the photos that are floating around, a Regan Smith nationwide car, um, the Jeff Gordon car uh, that has corrected, it no longer has the cool Light Polo Award logo, an Austin Dillon car, a lot of cool stuff, and that will be the final Spin Master NASCAR Authentics review, I would assume. Uh, I was originally planning to make this the big old send-off to Spin Master, the big climactic send-off, and then there was another... Uh, another wave. So uh, that's just kind of how this uh, this is the easiest way to define how NASCAR Authentics collecting is going. You were never quite sure what was to come and uh, it seems like that's changing a bit for uh, the Lionel Authentics. They're being very upfront and it's kind of it's kind of nice but at the same time I kind of miss some of the uh, the Wild West of collecting the Spin Masters. So sit back, relax, enjoy this video. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed. You guys are so good at that. I get so many likes on these videos and it helps me out so much because it, show, it shows that not only the quality is content, but it also helps uh, share the video. Um, it shows that you're interacting with it and when people interact with videos, YouTube likes it and they put that video right to the top. So it helps me out immensely if you hit the like button. So please do that. All right, without any further ado, uh, the second to the last wave of Spin Master NASCAR Authentics. This is David Land on YouTube. Alright, so the first of the seven cars in the wave that we're going to be taking a look at is the Jamie McMurray Cessna Beechcraft car uh, for Chip Ganassi Racing. Uh, this is an interesting choice by Spin Master. It's a car you don't see a whole lot of. Uh, unfortunately, this guy uh, is peg warming quite a bit. He's part of the Future Star segment, which again, uh, I'm not really understanding why a guy who's won uh, the Coke 600 and uh, and uh, the Daytona 500, of course, um, like, wait, a Future Star? I mean, more like Star of the Past, perhaps? I don't know. But it's cool to get this car, even though uh, not many people are buying it. It's kind of hanging around a bit. But uh, I I'll take a Ganassi car any day of the week. So let's take a look at the number one out of the box. And uh, we're not going to get many more of these Spin Master openings, unfortunately. So I got to savor the last couple times I'm doing it. Last few times, anyway. Like I said before, I really like the collector boxes, and I'm sorry they're going away. So let's take a closer look at Jamie Mack. So here is the Cessna car, and I have to say, it uh, definitely gives is giving me test car vibes, the paint scheme. Uh, again, an interesting choice by Spin Master. Uh, even more interesting, a sponsorship choice by Chip Ganassi and Cessna. Um, I wonder, uh, I mean, how many Cessna planes do you have to sell to pay for the sponsorship? And if you do sell the, uh, the amount needed for the sponsorship, how many NASCAR fans are actually going to buy a Cessna plane? Uh, if you guys don't know about Cessna, it's like um, kind of like uh, uh, consumer-grade airplanes that they sell to people like, uh, who like to fly. Um, the, the problem is that, of course, you know, how many people have the cash to, to throw around to uh, be able to fly 
uh, planes on a regular basis, and usually it's like drivers or uh, team owners like Chip Ganassi. Uh, so let's take a closer look at the box here. Uh, man, I love these collector boxes. I I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I know you guys. Some of you guys like the uh, the stuff that Lionel's putting out more. Um, I do know that, and people have been legitimate in that complaint that it's not very good for actually putting the cars in. But I like, I love the fact that I can make a background out of these. Thank, thank goodness I have enough of these um, that I don't really have to worry about not ever having enough to do backgrounds for uh, videos for the rest of my life. But, you know, whatever. Uh, so let's take a closer look at the car. And I'll point out some things that I find interesting. It's kind of cool to see the uh, number one outlined in silver. It's kind of hard to tell, but it looks kind of cool. Uh, it's cool to get a number one car. We haven't gotten one for a while. The last one we got was the uh, full-on McDonald's car. And by the way, that M the, for the McDonald's really stands out there. Uh, and there's the uh, most obvious comparison between a Spin Master car and a Lionel car. I'm not sure what Hawker is. Somebody let me know in the comments. I'm actually, I'm not sure what Beechcraft is either. Um, so that's a, a thing. So, uh, like I said, it's not the only Jamie McMurray car we've gotten for Spin Master NASCAR Authentics. We got this uh, McDonald's car. In 2014, I think it may have been Wave 3. It was either Wave 3 or 4. I can't remember off the top of my head. You guys will have to remind me in the comments. Um, but this was one of my favorite releases Spin Master ever did. Um, and we also got one on the Gen 5 body, but I never actually picked that up. Uh, we've also gotten from the Chip Ganassi stable, and you guys are going to know what one this is, uh, Kyle Larson's 42, easily my favorite Spin Master release of all time, the Target car. I could not believe they finally got that out, and uh, it just made my, made my NASCAR Authentics year of last year to get this car finally in the NASCAR Authentics line, and thankfully before Spin Master lost the license. But it's cool to have uh, Ganassi cars. Of course, you know, guys know that I'm an IndyCar fan, so uh, getting Ganassi stuff in, in any form of racing is always cool for me. So let's take a look at the second car in the wave. So here's the second car in the wave. It's Jimmy Johnson's Low Scheme from 2015, and this is the other car that's doing some peg warming, and I'm not really sure why, though I have a few theories. Um, okay, so I'm going to address this right, right off the bat. I noticed this as soon as they revealed the photos of this car. Uh, this is something Spin Master, ironically enough, has done before. If you remember my second hauler review, they put Junior Motorsports as Superman's uh, uh, drive, uh, as their car, as Superman's car. It was very strange, and um, but uh, that was a bit excusable because you could say, well, it's a Dale Junior car, but this is very clearly a Jimmy Johnson car from the Gray Racers segment. So uh, calling it a Junior Motorsports car. Boy, Spin Master really wants Junior Motorsports in uh, the Cup Series. Uh, very, cl I, I just, I don't understand that at all. What a, what a strange error. Um, just, just very, very strange. I don't even know what to think about that. Um, but this is something that I'm surprised got pushed back as far as it did. Frankly, it's unacceptable that this car was was so late in the year. This should have been a Wave One car, in my opinion. And I think it's kind of suffering from the fact that uh, not a lot of people are either they bought them already from Lionel or they're just not interested in Jimmy Johnson at this point. I think that'll change by the Daytona 500 though. And it helps that this scheme is by and large the same uh, for this year. So let's take a closer look at the Lowe's car. So yeah, I definitely think this was a good choice by Spin Master to include this car. Um, you know, again, I, I, I think the paint scheme's fine. I don't think it's quite as good as the old yellow numbered paint schemes, but it's much better than the uh, than a few of the old ones, uh, like the Cobalt ones from uh, the Gen 5 era. Uh, those did nothing for me and kind of looked, uh, frankly, pretty bad. Um, but again, I'm, I'm fairly frustrated, and it doesn't matter at this point anymore unless Lionel decides to not do 2016 cars in their range, um, that uh, that this car was so late in the year. I mean, this is a, 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 a core driver to have, and the fact that they didn't get this car in uh, very early to the Spin Master NASCAR Linux line is, is something, frankly, I think kind of hurt them uh, and probably lost them uh, the license. Because, I mean, like, you, you have to have these kind of drivers early on in the year. I mean, I, I know the scheme's essentially the same, but my goodness, Spin Master really dropped the ball on getting drivers like Jimmy Johnson and uh, Jeff Gordon into the early waves. I mean, man, oh, man, big ball drop. But a really cool uh, 
uh, box here, of course, you know, some of you will th think it's sullied by the Junior Motorsports logo. Uh, I don't think it's too bad. It's cool to see. As uh, Let's take a closer look and see if I can't find anything of note on here, if it would like to focus anytime soon. Uh, a pretty nice paint scheme. Uh, not a lot to go over, really. I mean, you guys have probably seen, again, this is the problem, because it's like, well, you know, this we've seen this scheme for a year already, and it's approaching two years for this scheme uh, for next year. Um, so, uh, yeah, not too much to go over. But, uh, again, a good release, honestly, um, and one I would definitely pick up if you're a Jimmy Johnson fan, because, again, you know, you'll be seeing a lot of it uh, heading on to uh, the next season and, uh, you know, beyond, probably. Uh, but if you uh, thought Jimmy's uh, 2016 car, or 2015 car, was, is a good pickup, I would suggest getting it. I just wish Spin Master had released it way earlier than this. So for car three, it's an interesting choice here. We've got the hard driver segment, Tony Stewart, Rush Truck Center's Chevy for Stewart Haas Racing. Uh, this is one of those things that I get annoyed about uh, from both Spin Master and Lionel. Uh, overabundance of Stuart Haas cars and Hendrick cars. Uh, we've got quite a few in this wave, and we've got quite a few coming from Lionel in recent uh, years. But again, pretty solid choice, even though I'm sure they didn't know at this point that Tony would be retiring when they uh, greenlit this diecast. Um, but a uh, solid choice and a car we haven't gotten uh, yet in the NASCAR Authentics, so it'll be worth taking a look at. And this one is uh, one of the easier ones to find as well, though it's not on the peg warming status like uh, the number one and the 48 are, uh, you should be able to find it pretty easily. So let's take a closer look at it. You know, I've never seen in all my travels a Rush Truck Center, so if anybody uh, in the comments has been to a Rush Truck Center, let me know because I have no idea what they look like. Uh, a pretty interesting paint scheme. Reminds me a lot of the Code 3 Associates car that we got uh, a year ago. Uh, except for, instead of, you know, kind of bright yellow and blue, this is kind of a more orangey yellow and uh, red paint scheme. But aside from that, it's pretty much the standard Stuart Haas racing look. I think it's a well-presented die cast. And I think it's a, a pretty decent choice, all things considered, especially with Tony's imminent retirement. Here's a look at the box, and thank goodness we've had our first real uh, 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 good choice for uh, segment here with the hard drivers for Tony Stewart, and he certainly is a hard driver, though less less so these days. I really do think Tony Stewart's starting to lose motivation for NASCAR, and that's probably why uh, he's hanging up the helmet so he can focus on his dirt stuff, which frankly, in my opinion, is uh, has always been his passion, his number one, and NASCAR has just kind of been the thing that... Uh, helped fund that dream of his. Uh, good, good career if you can get it, that's for sure. So uh, taking a look at the die cast, pretty cool. Um, again, we're seeing this thing that I've always complained about Spin Masters, and it's kind of um, uh, useless to complain about it now, but this kind of sloping down on the rear quarter panel. Kind of a strange decal error that just kind of plagued the Spin Master line from day one and never stopped. As you can see, look, it's a much, much straighter on this side than it is on this side. Uh, go go figure that one out, folks. Uh, just I think this is a really nice die cast. Looking at it, uh, it's just, you know, a very clean paint scheme. Uh, I've never been to a Rush Truck Center, like I said, so somebody let me know what these are like. Is it like a Loves or like a uh, Pilot? Um, it's interesting that uh, I think this is the one uh, truck stop, I would assume it's a truck stop, that's actually on a fairly front-running car. Uh, obviously, no offense to David Rakin, or um, David Gilland or Michael Annette, but uh, you know, at least Rush Truck Center uh, backed a, a former winner. <laughs> oh boy, that was pretty bad. I love the back markers, don't get me wrong. So uh, let's move on to the next car in the wave. Well, here's the second paint scheme that I think is absolutely unacceptable to be getting this late in the year. Um, the 3M Jeff Gordon. I mean, come on, Spin Master. I couldn't believe that this wasn't in the first couple waves of last year. Uh, he's in the Great Racers segment. A beautifully presented die cast. But man, oh man. I mean, he's already retired. He's in the Fox Sports booth now. What are you thinking, Spin Master? What are you thinking? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, no. I've sneezed on a video. How unprofessional. But the train keeps a rolling, folks. 
we don't stop for sneezes. We only stop uh, when I need to reposition the camera. So, let's take a close look at Jeff Gordon's 3M car. Wow, I have to say a really, really good looking piece here. Um, definitely, probably one of my favorites of the year. Obviously, not quite as good as the uh, as the uh, the release of the Kyle Larson. Uh, but man, this is a pretty good looking paint scheme uh, in person. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of it when they released it. I was like, meh. You know, I don't really know what you can do with a 3M scheme to make it really particularly interesting, but I think they've done a good job here, uh, and Spin Master certainly has done a good job of replicating it. Um, this is a decent approximation for uh, those wondering of Chase Elliott's uh, car for this year, the 3M car, whenever we end up getting a die cast of that, uh, whether or not we get that in the uh, uh, Lionel NASCAR Authentics line uh, remains to be seen. Uh, but if you need a Chase Elliott car for the start of the season, this would be a good choice. And if you're a Jeff Gordon fan, again, a uh, pretty solid choice here. Um, Great racer segment, a nice looking box. This will probably definitely be a longtime staple in the uh, background display. Um, again, you know, I, I think this the, the choice for Spin Master to go with this car was uh, very smart. But I think the implementation of it was all wrong. Um, you, but then again, you consider that had they not had that little incident with the uh, with the other Jeff Gordon car, which was the Drive Down Hunger car, this car would have gotten out around August. So that would have been an acceptable time period. But given the delay, man, that really hurt. Um, I think I think it hurt sales. Even though uh, I haven't been able to really find this all that much around now um, that these cars have been out. Uh, it's interesting to see the 3M uh, logo there on the hood. It seems a bit crooked in regards to, you see the stripe going down, 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 and then it uh, gets a little more crooked. I'm not sure if that's the way it is on the car, but uh, I'm really happy to add this die cast to the collection. Uh, obviously, I'm a Gordon fan through and through, so uh, this is a good one to add. So uh, let's go on to the next car in the way. And coming to us from the long, o <laughs> the longly overdue, but strongly, a uh, welcome addition to the Spin Master NASCAR Authentics line is the Martin Truex Furniture Row Racing Denver Mattress Car. Wow, fantastic addition to the line. This is probably my, well, I would say probably my most anticipated car for this uh, wave. Uh, I, I, you know, it seems like all the, the cars that I really like end up with the purple Future Stars. Uh, I don't know if that's biased because of uh, Buddy Lazier purple or what. But uh, really, really, really great to get this car. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I really love it when the diecast uh, dealers do, these smaller teams. Now, <laughs> granted, the 78 car made the chase this year and was in it uh, to win it for the championship. Was unable to do so, but what a great, uh, what a great effort from a team that uh, was a one-car team. I think they've expanded to two next year. Uh, I believe they brought on uh, Man and Castle, though. I can't remember for sure. But if they were able to expand two cars, um, what a great thing for them to be able to do. So, let's take a look at the Denver Mattress 78. All I've got to say is, yes, glad we got this. I know we had an influx of black cars in this wave. This is the third black car we've reviewed in this uh, uh, wave. And I've always said that we need, like, uh, when you do a wave of retail die casts, you need to, to vari uh, get a variety of colors. Um, so I would be cautious about... Uh, doing so many uh, like black cars or blue cars we've seen, red cars sometimes in waves, uh, overabundance. Uh, it all kind of runs together on the shelf and I think ultimately it, uh, it uh, hurts sales and uh, doesn't allow uh, merchandise to get moving. Uh, but look at, look at how few contingency sponsors are on this. I think this is incredible. Now I can't remember if Furniture Row Racing always has this few contingencies. Um, it's kind of interesting to see, though I did notice an error that I'm going to point out to you guys. Um, from the box art to this. I don't know if this is supposed to be a test car or what's going on here. Uh, it seems a bit strange to me. I also am surprised that it's not matte black. I would have expected it to be a matte finish. But if you guys notice here on the box, uh, this little orange thing, which I'm not really sure what it is. I think it, uh, I'm not sure if it's a sponsorship thing. Uh, let's take a close look at it, see if we can't... Uh... I honestly can't tell what that is. Honestly can't tell. So you guys will have to let me know in the comments. But uh, for whatever reason, it was included on the box art, but it wasn't included on the die cast. See, that's where it's supposed to be. 
but it's nowhere to be found. Um, I do like the fact that there are no contingencies on this. It definitely gives it a clean look, even though it's essentially just a black car with some white lettering and a red number. That's old school, man. Uh, this kind of looks like an ARCA car, and I mean that in the absolute uh, nicest way because it kind of gives you that throwback to, like, uh, they're kind of embracing this uh, stigma around them that they're a small, underfunded team. Though, from what I understand, the Furniture Row shop, which I think is actually in Denver rather than uh, North Carolina, where most of the other uh, NASCAR teams are based, uh, apparently they have a pretty massive shop. So uh, they're really not technically a small team. They're just... Uh, uh, a small team in the fact that they don't have a fleet of cars like uh, that they enter in every race. But a really, really great die cast and one that I'm incredibly happy to get in the NASCAR Authentics line before it closed out for Spin Master. So let's take a look at another car that I was very excited about, and I think there are a lot of fans of this driver. So here's another car I was pleasantly surprised to see that was released, and even uh, more so the fact that this thing is selling incredibly well from the Great Racer segment. It is Kevin Harvick's Die Tech number four. What a cool paint scheme, and what a different paint scheme. It's awesome to get this. Uh, we don't get uh, light blue and pink cars all that much. So a welcome, welcome addition to the line, in my opinion. So let's take it out of its box and take a look at it. I'm excited for this. And here we go, out of its box. The Die Tech car. Oh man, this is cool. Have I mentioned I like this paint scheme? Really, really cool. I, I think uh, the color scheme is awesome. It's probably not something Kevin Harvick would probably normally choose to drive. It's a bit loud, but uh, you know what? I like loud race cars sometimes. Uh, and pink is a color you don't often see, though you see it much more now that they're doing all this breast cancer awareness stuff. Uh, but. Uh, just on a regular car uh, to, to go with the pink and the light blue and the dark blue. It totally works for this scheme uh, in a very interesting uh, version of Kevin Harvick's car as it tries to run away from me. No, you cannot run away. You cannot hide from the Spin Master reviews. Uh, yes, uh, but yeah, a really cool scheme. And one, again, you just wouldn't expect them to release. It's just like, you know, you don't really think about it. It's like... Oh yeah, you know what, I want them to release the Ditech car, but they did it. So uh, I props to Spin Master on this one. We uh, look at the box and these weird old Stuart Haas renders where the cars look just really goofy. Not sure why they do that. They could just go to what the other guys do because the other guys' uh, renders look a little bit better. But uh, neat box. This will also definitely probably have a permanent space uh, in my uh, little uh, background there. Uh, the decals are just perfect on it. The scheme pops so well. It's just it's just a beautiful shade of blue, um, and I love the the contrast with the bright pink. I just think it's a really really good looking car. Um, just a fun release, a really fun release. Uh, it's not the last Kevin Harvick car uh, we will get this. Uh, I guess I could say year. I guess from Spin Master. It's not the last Kevin Harvick car we're going to get, and it also wasn't the first for 2015. As we'll take a look here, um, this car was released, I believe, in Wave 2. It's the Jimmy John's car. Um, it's kind of hard to make Kevin Harvick cars uh, because his main sponsor is Anheuser-Busch. Last year, Budweiser. This year, Bush Beer. Um, but uh, we are getting another Jimmy John's car, and this time it's going to be a chase version, and it's going to be the Sprint Cup champion version. And that's the last Kevin Harvick we will get from Spin Master, but it's going to be cool to get our third and final chase car from Spin Master and our third and final uh, Harvick car for this uh, season, I guess you could say, for Spin Master. So let's move on to the last car in the wave and one that I think a lot of people, judging by how well it's sold, are after. So easily the most popular and probably hard to find car, justifiably so in my opinion, the NASCAR Xfinity Series, the second version uh, from the NASCAR Xfinity uh, series we've gotten the second car from the NASCAR Xfinity series, I should say. Uh, but the fourth, uh, I guess you could call Grand National car we've gotten. Uh, we got two Fords in 2015, or 2014, and we got two Chevrolets, and we're about to get a third, that third being Regan Smith, in 2015, or for the 2015 season. 
And what a great choice, the Tax Slayer uh, number 88 Camaro for Dale Earnhardt Jr. In fact, I misspoke. We have gotten five uh, Grand National cars. I forgot about that Danica Patrick and Pala. What a strange release that was. I'll have to track one of those down and review it for you guys. But this is a Junior Motorsports car. So, Spin Master, you got it right. So let's crack it open. I'm so excited. I love these. I love, you know, obscure cars and cars from series we don't usually get die casts of. So to me, uh, Xfinity, car, Xfinity cars or nationwide cars are always good in my book. So let's take a look at the Tax Slayer car. Ah, so here it is, the Tax Slayer car. My goodness, what a great looking paint scheme. Uh, Spin Master did an incredible job uh, recreating this. It really, really pops. Um, when you look at it in person, I don't know how it's picking up on the camera. You guys will have to let me know in the comments because it's real. I just absolutely adore this paint scheme. Now, I'm going to ask a trivia question. Why is Dale Jr.'s bumper on all of his cars always black? I want you to answer in the comments and maybe I'll give the person who gets it right a shout out. So, answer in the comments why Dale Jr.'s back bumper is always black. Um, but anyway, a really cool die cast here. Uh, Taxslayer.com. Of course, uh, you probably noticed all the tax, you know, do your taxes commercials and all that fun stuff because they, all these tax companies, want a portion of your tax refund. Uh, fun fact there too. All right, so let's take a look uh, at the Tax Slayer box. Uh, this will probably also find a home in the uh, in the massive pile of Spin Master boxes. Really cool. Um, obviously, you know, it's not the best thing in the world just to get a Dale Jr. car when there's so many Xfinity drivers that we could be getting. Um, but you know what? We're getting a Regan Smith in Wave 5, a.k.a. the Lost Wave Part 2. So I can't fault them if they had to get a Junior car made to get the Regan Smith car made um, because that's just an awesome release. And this is an awesome release for that matter. The 88 car, it's really cool to see it. It's cool to see stuff like Armor and Hunt Brothers Pizza, which are mainly uh, nationwide or Xfinity Series sponsors. I know some people are going to complain that there's not the uh, name rail on the back, but uh, I don't have a problem with it. Looks like the onboard camera is modeled there. Let's take a closer look and see if it will focus. Yeah, looks like the onboard camera is represented. So cool little detail there. It's cool to see all the little sponsors on Dale Jr.'s car. What uh, what races did he run the Tax Slayer car at? Uh, this may have been a Daytona scheme. I can't remember uh, specifically, but uh, I think he might be running this uh, this year as well in the Xfinity series. So a good release from Spin Master, one that I can definitely get behind. Now let's take a uh, a look at some of the other Xfinity cars that I have around. And this is the first one we're going to take a look at. This is the one that was released uh, this year. Uh, the other Spin Master Camaro. This is the Chase Elliott car from Junior Mocha Sports. Um, that is obviously a car that I was hyped about, very hyped about, and really glad that we got it released. Um, obviously cool to see those two together. Um, obviously before this, um, we had the Mustang body. So now we have a Mustang and a Camaro together. Uh, but that is not where it's going to end. Um, I would assume with the Lionel NASCAR Authentics that we're eventually going to end up getting nationwide cars. So this is important to, uh, uh, or Xfinity cars, this is important to uh, bring up. So I've got an Xfinity Kyle Larson here that, again, Race Day 2011 came through. MVP got me this. Um, so a little quick comparison of the molds. Uh, you can just take a look at. This is a car that I didn't uh, uh, compare in my Spin Master uh, versus Lionel comparison video. So you can take a look and see uh, what version of this car you prefer. But if we do end up getting uh, Xfinity cars in the Lionel NASCAR Authentics, now you know what they will look like. Uh, the only difference will be the white interior that you can see on the Spin Master, a black interior uh, for the non-retail version of the Lionel cars. So let's take a close look at all the die cast together and I'll give some final thoughts. So, Wave 4, what did you guys think of it? It's one of the last waves of the Spin Master NASCAR Authentics. How do you think they did? How do you feel about the delay? How long it took to get this wave? I know that was one of the things I complained about. The fact that we got Jimmy Johnson's main paint scheme and Jeff Gordon's main paint scheme uh, so late in the year was absolutely ridiculous. But it was also really cool at the same time to get the Ditech car, the Tax Slayer car, 
and the 78, cars that we just haven't gotten before. It was really cool to see. So a mixed bag. Um, I'm excited to do Wave 5, and I'm excited to do those memorable moments. So be sure to hit the like button and comment, all those things I asked you to comment uh, previously. I thank you guys so much for watching these NASCAR Authentics videos. It means a whole lot to me. I love your feedback, and I love the viewership. So until next time, guys, the Spin Master send-off will continue very soon here on my channel. Until then, I'll see ya.